the ladies' dressing room. Jonathan Swift. We all we all know this um, horrible misogynistic poem, don't we? There's Strephon, and he's enamoured of Celia. And Celia pops out one day and he sees his opportunity, so he nicks into uh, um, her dressing room and encounters far too closely, far too intimately, the horror of her physical form, ending with the most ghastly encounter with the steaming contents of her chamber pot. The horror of the beloved's body. Strephon, he kind of invades her privacy, doesn't he? That's what he does. He gets to know the beloved's body too well and there isn't that necessary kind of gap of desire. What strikes one about this poem, of course, is that this intimate encounter with the body of another is staged through that body's absence. Strephon can only invade Celia's privacy because he knows Celia has gone out. She's not there. We know too well the other, only in the other's absence. And what's really startling about this poem is that actually Celia never appears in it at all. We as a reader know about Celia because of the chamber pot, because of the wigs, because of the detritus of her body. It's not that there is a Celia and that there is detritus, there is actually detritus, and therefore, as readers, we kind of hallucinate the absent presence of a Celia. And I'm thinking about this because I've just read The Digitalization of Intersubjectivity by Jan de Vos, and this kind of problematic logic is really what, what exercises him within this work, the horror and fear of Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, yeah, is generally that they know us too well or they can come to know us too well. Uh, their algorithms, their big data on our searches, grant them a kind of a, a hideous proximity to the intimate truths of our lives and these things should be kept private. For divorce, this is kind of a, a dangerous fantasy. The fantasy is that indeed Cambridge Analytica through their algorithms can absolutely know who we are because that suggests that who we are is fundamentally algorithmizable. Algorithms can only discover what has already been placed within algorithms. The faith in the supreme power of Cambridge Analytica is a faith in the algorithm and our absolute identity with it. But there's another dangerous fantasy connected to this and it's the idea that taken up a level Cambridge Analytica are a dangerous organisation because they know us intimately and indeed there is a problem with their claims to know us intimately because we are more than the algorithms that they set up because that gives us the illusion 
that actually our authentic selves are recoverable. So if the first kind of dangerous fantasy is that Cambridge Analytica actually do know us intimately through their big data, the second is that the failure of them to know us intimately through their big data allows us to posit the truth of ourselves. The first dangerous fantasy is that of Strephon thinking he has absolutely encountered the truth of his beloved in the bottom of a chamber pot. The second is that Acknowledging the failed nature of that encounter allows for a claim to know the absent Celia, the authenticity of her existence outside of the algorithm. 